kind of had this sort of nightmare that this would eventually happen. Don't know what she got into. Hey guys, Dusty Baker, Customers by Center. Welcome back to our channel. Getting a few little crazy sprinkles here. Which is, uh, I haven't felt rain since uh, early July. But got a little wild thing that happened at the ranch yesterday. We were out of town, of course. Things happen when you're out of town. It's on our way back. You get a phone call. And um, it's got to do with our girl here. Cora somehow got some lacerations on her chest and her foot and uh, I gotta take her to the vet. Yesterday I had one of my helpers, Summer Hands, come over yesterday and Eli Spent a lot of time with me this summer helping me do random stuff. He goes to Sulphur. But, um, young kid, he, uh, I had him come over here and, and, and feed, uh, Cora and the chickens and check the waters and stuff. Kevin normally does, but Kevin was also actually working. <laughs> so I had Eli come a look, and when he got here, he sent me some pictures of Cora and said, Hey, she's all ripped up on her chest and she's bleeding and, uh, her foot's bleeding and sent me pictures and so I immediately called Mark my horse buddy who helped me get her and helped me train her and stuff like that and uh, we weren't going to be home uh, anytime soon so Mark said I'll go by and look at her and so thankful Mark's been in these situations before as a horse guy came and started uh, treating the area of her chest or cleaning it putting some stuff on her try to prevent infection and then uh put up, put some stuff on her leg uh keep that cut intact so i went and borrowed neighbor's trailer this morning richard that's the same trailer that i used haul the uh texas cow over to mom and kevin's to get her taken care of when her situation happened so um first time being a horse guy kind of had this you know sort of nightmare that this would eventually happen i don't know why don't know what she got into. We've walked around the place. We're going to keep searching. Um, there's, you know, she lives in this corral here. Nothing sticking out with that would hurt her. So got to investigate where it came from and what happened. Uh, probably will never find out, but uh, you, know, you just try to take preventive measures. So I got to take her to the vet and there's a vet up the road and they're supposed to call me and, get, uh, and tell me when I can bring her in. So I tried to call uh, vets last night. And uh, if you're not a customer of a vet, I couldn't get in for emergency vet. Uh, situation. So Mark said she'll probably be okay until the morning. So that's why we're here and we're going to try to take her. Yeah, sort of.
Well, we just got back from the vet. Just out of respect, uh, I didn't film anything inside the vet clinic. I didn't want to be disruptive or anything. They got her taken care of. Let's take a look at her. Hey, girl. Ah, the core got sewn up right here in her chest. She had a big chunk right here. Big chunk here in this fatty spot, basically is what the vet said in these areas here. I got a little abrasion there, but she'll patch up. We're gonna keep her doctor and keep her clean in the meantime, but you gotta take care of her girl. Brooks is gonna come see you. She misses you and she's worried about you. You're a good girl too. You're a good girl. Took a minute to load you, but you're a good girl. Let's get you unloaded. You will. Maya's out here rolling around. Off at the ranch. Maya. Let's get you back in. I don't know. To treat it basically from now on is use hydrotherapy. So that's what we're going to do is every day, twice a day for about 10 minutes um, each time I have to soak her down. And so I've started that process spraying her down. We've got to keep those wounds clean. Uh, I think that's why they recommended the hydrotherapy. He said he's seen lots of uh, people use different methods and, and stuff like that. But he said hydrotherapy on these horses are the best. And uh, it, you, I know some of you are horse people out there. And you know, you understand that those that skin is, is, is a very different type of skin. It's thin and it's tight on those animals. So these wounds will, are going to heal back. It's going to take a long time. They're will never look the same obviously um, but it's going to take some time to you uh for her to heal and so she's also on an on a uh, antibiotic that mixes that has mixed in with her feed helps uh fight all that and try to get her better sooner we're doing that and a paste uh that he recommended too so she's getting a paste she's getting a powder in her feed she's getting hydrotherapy at least twice a day and then getting i think it's called vetricin and the vetricin that comes on after it. So it's gonna take a while, but uh, she'll recover from it. And uh, in the meantime, we gotta find out what she got onto. A lot of the place that she's in is a corral. So we're not sure where she would have found a T-post or something like that. Um, I know that horses and barbed wire T-posts don't get along. It's uh, unless you got a ranch horse running out in the pasture with them. Other than that, she's in a corral. And that's where she spends most of her life is in our big corral areas and our trap and whatnot. So I don't know. It's a tough deal, but we'll go check the Dunbar herd.
All right, so we're kind of over here in the northeast corner of our hay meadow. Uh, we just fed some cubes over to the Dunbar and Haas herd. We like to check our perimeter fences when we uh, come out here. I don't know, every other time or something. But something I noticed is uh, as we were making our rounds is, look at this tree. This is a cedar tree. And man, you talk about a rub. Looks like a big old bull elk has been rubbing on this thing in the middle of rut look at that right there <laughs> that is uh that is not a bull elk obviously <laughs> but that's exactly what it looks like um they have whipped these trees i don't think i've ever seen a cedar tree whip that good that is that is an awesome sign of getting after a tree which out of all the trees it needs to hammer, it's it's that one. This looks like a um, Oklahoma redbud. Rub it on in a little bit, won't hurt it. Smoothed it off some. But they are getting after these trees here. This looks like a elm or hackberry tree. Been rubbing on it. They may have been chewing on that actually is what it looks like. May have been gnawing on it. Get a little extra little grub, little chew there. Not rubbing on anything else, but they've cleared these trees out like a bunch of goats. Um, not gonna eat the cedar necessarily, but they're gonna break branches off. You can kind of see where they're, some of these branches broken, like breaking them here with the, the boys are probably showing off a little bit like a bull, like an elk or a, or a buck, a white-tailed buck would do. You know, gotta uh, show their they're dominance and there's another one there they've been whipping so that's awesome they're breaking these cedar trees and so more than likely hopefully they die you can already see the difference in color here we do not like those trees there's some shrubs that they've been eating too it looks like but this is an area that we pushed uh right in here we pushed this whole thing was lined with trees Yep, we did. We just fed them. We sure did. I don't know why I didn't. Uh, I, but see, this area, you can kind of see a ring right here. This area was an, an island of trees. Kind of blended in here, and we needed to build our fence through here. Um, and you can kind of see the separation here in this open area. But need to go back through and clean some of this stuff up. Uh, there's some big old pecan tree there. and it, It'd be even better of a pecan tree um but there's some cedar under here uh that's blocking some of the room of uh, limbs to grow and pecans to um be harvested i see a bunch of pecans up there which is a good sign because we had a lot of rain in the uh spring and early summer so these trees like cedar or the hackberries keep here's another there's a pecan tree back in there right there's one you got a hackberry that's in the way um you got these cedars that are in the way that uh don't let the entire native tree like the pecan tree uh, gl grow and flourish so we need to go through here and cut a bunch of these smaller ones so that the big ones can grow up and and be big like in the middle of here this pecan tree and you got all these younger ones you need to come through here and pluck them and open this up like this hay meadow here we are i'm back to our treatment process here with our hydrotherapy Dunbar herd looks good. They're all happy with the cubes and stuff, but um, I guess our focus on a daily basis now is uh, Cora. Add it to the ranch to-do list. Um, but uh, I want to thank the vet for uh, their help getting uh, Cora taken care of, but I also want to thank my friend Mark. Um, Mark is my horse guy that comes and helps, and he's done so much for, for us and helping us, you know, train Cora and whatnot, and also want to give mark a big shout out for coming over here while we were out of town and getting her ankle wrapped up because she got it she got her ankle cut a little bit um on the inside of her leg back here um besides the two wounds up on the front of the chest but i want to thank him for calm down i want to thank him for coming over and taking care of her and uh, getting her cleaned up at least he also recommended hydrotherapy as well using water so i want to thank my buddy mark and uh for helping me out he's a good dude teaching me all about this horse stuff <laughs> learning obviously learning 
we'll get her taken care of. Thank you guys for watching us. See you guys soon. How's her boo-boos doing? Are they okay? <laughs> Did she sneeze all over you? <laughs> it's okay. Hey, I'll clean it.